Hi guys, this is my first video and I want to immediately apologize for my English that won't be perfect and for the quality of the voice because I'm recording with regular headphones because I ain't got better ones but now let's go back to MTG Today I have a new nice deck for you it's a deck that has already been built by others but I found those other lists not functional as this one I've built on my own this deck is a Lurus Companion Enchantments and let's quickly move to the decklist and deck deck Here's the decklist. We have Lurus of the Ruined Den as the companion. Then we have Four Side of Life's Bounty, Four Hateful Eidolon, Three Dead Weight, Four Kaya's Ghost Form, Four Omen of the Dead, Four Starfield Mystic, Four Lampet of Death's Vigil, Four Old Deck Glitters, Four Angelic Gift, Three Mare's Grasp. Then, talking about lands, we have One Castle Arden Bay, Four Plains. 2 Castle Lock Twain, 5 Swamp, only 3 got the Shrine because I ain't got the 4th Wild Card, as you can see I'm really poor at it, and 3 Scarred Barons, and 4 Fable Passage. In sideboard we have 1 Dead Wave, 4 Disenchant, 3 Eidolon of Obstruction, 1 Mary's Grasp, 3 Timer Chosen from Death, and 2 Hedith's Intervention. Let's move to the deck tech. So, the basic deck tech is simple here. We have to cast our Lurus to allow us casting back from graveyard all our spells because they roll permanence card with converting mana cost true or less. And uh, going card by card, I start from outside of life's bounty. Uh, is very useful because can provide us protection from one color once per turn and if it's cast from graveyard also two times per turn. His ability is very effective against single target removal spells but also can result crucial in attacking or blocking. Hateful Eidolon is one of the key cards of the deck because functions as a draw engine mainly with our removal errors such Dead Weight and Mare's Grasp uh, but also starts uh, a little combo that I discovered uh, using this deck. I'll explain that later. We have Dead Wave and Mage Grasp as removal spells. Uh, they're very useful because they're cheap but effective. We have Kaya's Ghost Form. Uh, it's the most important support aura in this deck. It shells our Lurus and prevents him from going into the graveyard, but most importantly to be excited by cards like Elspeth Conquers Death, Devout Decree and others. The main aim to attach this card is Lurus, but if we have multiple copies of it, we can enchant the other key cards, such as Hateful Eidolon, Lampet of Death's Vigil, Starfield Mystic, and again Lurus. Then we have Omen of the Dead. Uh, Omen of the Dead is here to grant us a sh second chance if Lurus accidentally goes to, into the graveyard, but as I said before, for Gaia's Ghost Form, if our Lurus is safe, we can freely use this card to get back other key pieces. It also has the ability to sacrifice itself, granting us Cry 2, and that would be probably useful against mid-range control decks to assure ourselves good draws. Then we have another key card of the deck, is Starfield Mystic. Uh, in this deck, this card is shelled perfectly, mainly for his first static ability, which reduces all the costs of our deck to one, except for himself, that will be always cost, for cost two mana. But also for his triggered ability, which becomes crucial in this deck, because we have removal auras, which instantly go into the graveyard, and we also have plenty of enchantment creatures which easily die thanks to the opponent or can be sacrificed thanks to their own ability that's the case of outside of life's bounty or by the ability of lampad of that vigil lampad of that vigil the card nobody is playing this card on its own is not that strong actually it's a decent body to be dropped at one thanks to starfield mystic and you won't say nothing more, but from this card starts a nice combo, I'll explain soon. Anyway, his ability allows us 
to close the game when the opponent is low health and this, that must be considered because I won multiple times thanks to his ability. All the glitters and the angelic gift are, uh, are win con, actually, without all the glitters our damages aren't high enough and without angelic gift our body should be easily blocked by basically every opponent's body. I'll now discuss the sideboard. We have one dead weight and one marsh grasp, mainly uh, against creatures matchups. Then we have four disenchant and two headless intervention to grant us a removal spell for Graph Digger's Cage, which uh, totally breaks uh, our deck. Then we have three Eidolon of Obstruction to mess up uh, Walker's deck. And then we have three Timer chosen from death to uh, mess up uh, escape cards like Euro or War Strider, cards like that. Now that I have explained why I've put these cards together, let me explain you the simple but nice combo I was talking about throughout the video. The combo can start when we have on the battlefield Arlurus enchanted with Kaya's ghost form, then we have to have uh, one lamp of this video and any number of hateful Eidolon. Uh, the combo is simple. We have to sacrifice thanks to Lamp of Death's Vigil ability, our Lurus, then Lurus, who, which is enchanted, returns back to the battlefield and allows us to cast uh, a spell from the graveyard. Then we cast back Kaya's Ghost Form on Lurus, then sacrifice him again and he comes back from the graveyard, then we cast again Kaios Ghost Form, and again and again. This combo allows us to draw cards for the cost of one generic mana and one black mana, equal to the number of hateful Eidolon we have. This combo is nice uh, mainly against uh, control and mid-range matchups where we have uh, more lands on the battlefield so it's easier to do it uh, multiple times but I, if you want to utilize this combo I uh, recommend you to never leave Lurus without Kaios Ghost Form because a dead Lurus or even worse uh, an exiled Lurus uh, is absolutely useless. I also would like to discuss about a maybe board uh, here because I found uh, different red deck lists uh, on this deck and for reasons uh, no one convinced me to play that. I prefer my personal recipe and but I understand why others put these cards in the deck and I want to analyze them. Karametra's Blessing might be the most important out of four reasons. Undestructible is very important but the only card we should switch with is outside and we need creatures so it seemed difficult to me to substitute these two cards. Like the Vope is a more versatile card than Disenchant but I'm running this in chat in the sideboard mainly for Graph Digger's Cage that can't be destroyed by Light of Hope. Pierce Wayfarer might be an interesting add to pump our creatures when the combo I've explained before starts, but we already have Starfield Mystic which get counters, so it seems pretty much in the tile. Sentinel's Eyes and Sentinel's Mark are interesting, but I don't know which slot to switch and personally I would prefer Sentinel's Mark than Sentinel's Eyes because we have a Starfield Mystic which reduces our, our costs and uh, let's go on Moji's Favor is uh, pretty much in the tile it uh, can be useful against control decks to deal more damage to the first turns but it's not the strong, uh, this card is not the strong. Turn of Hope 
might be one of the most interesting ad because uh, reasons you know we have a lot of game life and pay two for to do our card would be nice Daxos might be interesting but we have enough game life the bird of Malatis uh, would be good against aggro matchups uh, because of the wall and also because of the ramp but I don't know Transcendent Envoy is just a bad copy of Starfield Mystic in this deck and uh, probably the main reason to play that instead of Starfield Mystic is because he has flying and because probably you uh, don't have the white cards to redeem Starfield Mystic then we have a family the cacophony uh, which is a good choice but we don't want to exile our enchantment from the graveyard so becomes in this deck pretty much in a tile we have Mario Triton that I would love to play but it isn't uh, an enchantment creature so uh, I prefer to play other enchantment creatures about Call of the Dead Dweller I will say that's the only card that convinced me and uh, I'm playing right now Omen of the Dead because it's an enchantment and cost less than Call of the Dweller but Call of the Dead Dweller is probably the best card to put in uh, switching with Omen of the Dead let's play a match here <coughs> waiting for the match Let's see. Already. Nice. Jaguar Fossey, 76. We have a really nice sand here. Really nice. We can keep seven and hopefully break him. First turn we go for Swamp and Hateful Eidolon. Next turn I think uh, I will go for all the glitters because it's not covered so I actually go for the, all the glitters and attack to do more damage as possible it doesn't have removals so I'm fine it doesn't have land this game will be fast I guess I'm putting on the battlefield an 8 for Eidolon and the Chaos goes form on the hateful Eidolon then I'm attacking concede that's fine we got a, a really nice hand here Let's see another match. Waiting for the match. Found. Maybe. Yes, found. Column 74. Let's go. It's using Chandra's avatar. Okay, that's quite a nice hand. It's quite a nice hand. I keep that. Quite a nice hand here. We pay to life and put down the outside. Mm. 
because maybe it got a simic flash and that might be a problem. Tamer, so probably a Tamer Clover. So we're putting down a Starfield Mystic. And let's see. That's not a Temple Clover, maybe. He's playing Euro, maybe a Reclamation. I always forget about Temple Reclamation. But we're fine. We got all the glitters on the outside cause of life link then angelic gift draw a card and let's see what we got a swamp let's put another angelic gift on the starfield mystic to draw another card and to pump uh, up our save let's attack for seven damages If he puts down Wilderness Reclamation, that's a problem. Storm's Wrath. I didn't uh, thought about that. Now we can start with Mystic again. Lamp it off this Vigil. And pass it through. Next turn we can go for Lurus and cast back our spells from the graveyard. But I would like to have a Caius Ghost form to prevent our Lurus. That's a Tamur Walkers, I guess. Nice. Now it's, it seems difficult for him to cast a Storm's Wrath, hopefully. My turn. Let's see. I put down a swamp, then I'm casting Lurus, but paying only white mana, or maybe not. Let's see the graveyard. We need to cast both of them, so uh, let's pay like that. Lures, then all the glitters on Starfield Mystic. Marish Grasp on the Dragon and I'm attacking with both on the Serkan Passage and to get a swamp. Then we're putting down uh, then we're putting down a side of life's bounty prevent our lures from the dead and we keep our lamp of that switching in our end we next to combat here all attacks we want to shut down his planeswalkers 
so I'm attacking with Starfield Mystic on Serkan, Lurus on Tamiyo, and Lampet of this Vision in his face. There are no dragons, so I'm fine. Next damage. There are two enchantments, so our Starful Mystic is not safe, but if we sacrifice our save, we're fine. Enter. He doesn't expect that. Storm's Wrath, actually. I'll sacrifice there. Submit one. Auto pay. Protection from red. Then I sack my Lamp of Death Vigil to deal one damage. They both survive, and the game is done here. Uh, pull an angelic gift here on Starfield Mystic. Auto play and concede. That's fine. Okay, my first video is about to end. I hope you guys enjoy the content, I also hope you leave a like and subscribe because I really need followers to improve the quality of my videos and to enlarge my collection of cards. So I leave my email for PayPal donations and if you can suggest me a better way to receive donations that would be perfect. Excuse me but I'm new to this. In the following days, if I receive encouragements, I'll post more matchups, gameplays and also other decks. For example, I have built a more junk deck with Titan's Nest, which goes in infinite mana and meal, but I'm poor at Wildcard, so I can redeem that until the next month, or until I receive some donations. Already, thank you for everything, and I'll see you soon in another video.